Now in question nine, we've been given a robotic arm, which is attached to a flat surface at the origin O, and it's used to draw a graphic design. Now the arm is made from two rods, which are connected at P and they're both of length D. And the pen is attached at Q. Now we have to show that the X coordinate of the pen can be modeled by the equation as follows. So essentially what the question is asking us to do is find the coordinate of Q, which can be seen on the X axis at this point. You can draw the line. Yep. Roughly there. Um, so this is the X coordinate that the graph, sorry, the question is asking us to find out. Now, on its surface, this question does seem a bit daunting, but what we can do is use right angle theorem or right angle triangle theorem to help solve this. So if I was to go ahead and draw sort of a big right angle triangle here from point P to point, or uh, the X axis even, sorry. Um, what we find is that this becomes a huge sort of right angle triangle. And not only that, but we also form this medium sized right angle triangle and this sort of small triangle. And if I was to go ahead and plot the points here, here, and here, label them A, B, and C, for instance, we can see that if we were to find out the exponent C, all we have to do is find this long length and take away these two small lengths away from it. So essentially we know that OC would be equal to OA minus AB minus BC. So essentially this is what the question is asking us to do. We need to find the lengths of these three lines and then put them into this equation. So we know what we're working towards. Let's go ahead and do it. So firstly, we need to find the length of OA. So if I go ahead and give a title OA, uh, we know that this essentially from the right angle, we know that this angle is theta. In accordance to this angle, OA would just be equal to D cos theta through our Sokotoa method. So we know that that's all well and good. Um, so now that we have OA, we have to go ahead and find AB. And AB can be found using this sort of middle sized um, right angle triangle. However, we don't have any angles in this. What we can say, however, is that because this angle is also theta as per the question, this angle becomes two theta. <clears throat> and that makes things much easier to work with. Um, the only fact is that we don't actually have any sort of sides on this triangle. But what we can do is use the big triangle um, to help find the side of PA because the big triangle shares this side with the small triangle. So PA from the big triangle would just be equal to D sine theta. So we can go ahead and find BA as well, where <clears throat> we know that if we use tan theta, so tan of two theta, this would be equal to the opposite side upon the adjacent side. So the opposite to two theta here is AP, so, or D sine theta. And the bottom is a b which is what we need to find so essentially we have found that a b is equal to d sine theta upon tan 2 theta okay so that's all well and good so now that we have got two important conclusions of oa and a b our final one is finding cb <clears throat> So CB can be found using this small angle, sorry, the small triangle here, uh, where we know that this angle here, again, is two theta from the laws of opposite angles. Now, uh, we also, again, have to find sort of one side in this triangle to help solve using Sokotoa. So if we go ahead and find PB, we should be able to take that away from the length of this arm to get QB. So PB from the rules in the same way is just equal to um, the sine of two theta, which is just opposite upon hypotenuse. So I can go ahead and write PB as equal to AP, which is D sine theta upon sine of two theta. Okay, so we know what PB is, and hence we can find QB, which should just be D minus D sine theta upon sine two theta. So now that we have QB, and this angle, we can find CB. So CB would just be equal to 
QB times cos of two theta. So we can substitute, substitute this in as D minus D sine theta upon sine two theta times this with cos two theta. And that gives our value for CB. Now that we have the three values for OA, AB and CB, we can go ahead and take them away from each other. So we know that OC is equal to OA minus AB minus BC. Uh, if I substitute my values in, I get this is equal to D cos theta minus D sine theta upon tan two theta minus D cos two theta minus D sine theta times cos two theta upon sine two theta. And all I've done here is just expand out uh, this CB term here. Um, from this, we know that this and this can cancel out. So what we're left with is D cos theta minus D cos two theta. This can be rewritten as D common cos theta minus sine of pi by two minus two theta. And then of course, if you input the minus sign inside of the sine term, what we get is exactly the model the question requires us to get. So for question 9b, we've been asked to hence show that the x equation can be rewritten in the following form. So what we had from part a was that x is equal to d times cos theta plus sine 2 theta minus pi by 2. Okay, and we can go ahead and use our compound um, formulas to help make this d times cos theta minus cos two theta. Uh, be careful of that change in sign. And then we can change cos two theta into cos two cos square theta minus one. So this becomes d times cos theta minus two cos square theta minus one. And of course, then if we just multiply out the brackets, we get what the question is asking for with minus one times minus one equaling plus one um, plus cos theta minus two cos square theta, hence solving this part as well. Now, finally for question nine C, or not finally, sorry, for question nine C, uh, we've been given that X, it can be shown in the following form. And we've been asked to state the greatest possible value of X and the corresponding value of cos theta. So um, just looking at this equation, we know that uh, since cos always fluctuates between one and minus one, the this term here can actually equal zero. And if that's the case, then 9d upon eight would be the maximum value. So x is equal to 9d upon eight would be the maximum value in this case. So 9d upon eight. And this would only be the case if cos theta is of course equal to a quarter because a quarter minus a quarter be equal to zero. So cos theta would thus be equal to one by four. And solving this part as well. So for question 9D, we've been given figure three, which shows the arm when the X coordinate is at its greatest possible value. And using this, we have to find in terms of D, the exact distance OQ. So if I draw a line OQ, it will essentially look like this. And we know here that we can use the cos rule to help find the length of it. So the cos rule simply states that if I have uh, three sides here and an angle here, C squared is just equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos theta. So essentially, we can go ahead and substitute this. Let's substitute this in. And essentially, this will make um, OQ squared is equal to D squared plus D squared minus 2 times D times D times cos theta. Its maximum is just a quarter. So I can go ahead and substitute that in straight away. Um, times one by four. Um, if I simplify this down, this basically gives me um, two D squared minus half D squared. And this is just equal to three by two D squared. But again, this is OQ squared, OQ squared. Uh, so OQ would just be equal to this to the square root, which is just root three by two D. Or if you want to, um, 
be more accurate, then this will be root six by two D, hence solving this question.